I, I actually have some pictures uh, back in 1977 of what the campus looked like and where and um, Devil Biss Hall. It literally was nothing but a big sand lot. Uh, there was no grass; it was all sand. Few sidewalks, some small trees. They planted those large oak trees that are now uh, uh, that go towards go in front of Henson Hall and go towards uh, Devil Biss. They got planted in the mid 70s by uh, Norm Crawford. And uh, so they were young trees when I got there. So obviously the campus, just in its physical shape, has changed so much with the, the, the beautification of the campus. When we were in um, Devil Biss Hall in the late 80s, we were overcrowded in that hall. And the math and, and, uh, math and computer science had to leave uh, Devil Miss Hall and go over to what was called the Power Professional Building, which is our East Campus now. So we had the Math and Computer Science Department over there. Then when the metal building, the College Center became available, we moved the, the biology, a lot of the biology faculty out of Devil Miss and moved them into that building, which was right across the sidewalk from us as that was closed. And then uh, we still needed more room and the Allen Wood Shopping Center where Seagull Square is right now, that became available and the University Foundation bought that. And then I moved, uh, as Dean, we moved uh, some biology and we moved physics and we moved uh, some uh, math over there. And the nursing department, which used to be a separate school back in the 80s. And so the, the savior was going to be Henson Hall. We were going to bring everybody back together. We bring nursing and math, computer science back, and we get rid of the Allen Wood and all that. And they would all be between Devil Biss and Henson Hall. It's been just tremendous. Henson Hall was where our old dining hall used to be. And that is fascinating. Tom was mentioning the math over in Power Professional. That's where I had statistics, was having to troop over to Power Professional building to take uh, from Dr. Luft, uh, Tom, taking statistics from Phil Luft um, across campus. Um, I had psychology in uh, Potomac Hall at the, the, the tin building, as we used to call it. When I was in school here, that was primarily the art department, I think. Uh, but yeah, um, biologists were in there before we built the new building. So um, just that was fascinating. Um, and again, the amount of change, unbelievable. We talk about that with regard to uh, my, my little center, the Eastern Shore Regional GIS Cooperative. It's sort of famous now that the ESRGC has moved around. It started off in a converted dark room on the second floor of geography. Um, and in fact, uh, Lauren, her name used to be Wester, now it's McDermott. So Lauren, um, a graduate of the program, very first employee of the ESRGC was, you know, working in this converted dark room and it was it was very dark and <laughs> dim there's no windows obviously that sort of thing uh and and she hated it and so uh that was one of the things early on she's like look i'm going to continue to work for you and do this great work for the eastern shore and for Salter university but you've got to get me an office with a window or i'm going to go crazy right so uh, we eventually moved to um allenwood so uh, older graduates, if they're watching this, will remember Nacho Pete's. And so where uh, Nacho Pete's used to be is where the ESRGC uh, was actually after the physics folks moved out of it, I think uh, is when we moved in. And then um, and then from Allenwood, once the new building was built, uh, we moved into a room on the first floor of Henson Hall for a little while. Uh, and let's see, and then the center moves over to the old architectural engineering building, which is behind the lacrosse uh, fields. And uh, that was always fascinating because um, we were in the direct path of um, uh, lacrosse missiles coming in. Uh, uh, Jim Berkman consistently having to pay to replace the windows in the SRGC where these lacrosse guys are blowing them out. They eventually created a much higher fence to try to keep the lacrosse balls in the field. So that was wild. And then, and of course now, the SRGC is downtown, right? So talk about a big change. Um, the Salisbury University 
taking a very definitive stand to be part of the Salisbury community. Um, we got that building donated to us downtown. And so now we're gonna have our Center for an Entrepreneurship down there, the SRDC's down there, We've got a major art gallery down there. Um, and uh, I love to see that, right? That's something that's really important to me and special to me because growing up in the region, we want to make Salisbury University and, and Salisbury be, you know, as tightly connected as we can. And, and the ESRGC is part of that now in a space that's just outstanding. In the late 80s, we knew we had to build a new building because Devil Biz Hall was just so old. Uh, things, the, the entire HVAC system of the building was so bad. We tried to overhaul it with patchwork, but it just didn't, didn't work. As an example, I had a lab on the first floor of Devil Biz. And we had fume hoods there that would supposedly carry the fumes from noxious chemicals up to the roof and blow them out through the roof. But uh, one day I was in the lab working away and, and uh, you know, I heard uh, sirens and then an ambulance. And so I went out my door so, and it turned out to be one of our faculty members who had an office just above me uh, from my lab. And what had happened was I was working with ether and some other chemicals. And obviously there were some leaks in the pipe work there from that fume hood. And some of those fumes were leaking into his office while he was in there working on papers or whatever. And so that kind of helped us uh, spur on the state to give us some money. And so they said, all right, um, get yourself together a committee and develop a plan for a new science building. What's funny is for students, uh, and alumni who are here for four years and then leave, um, it, it really um, stuns them when they come back and how much change there is. For those of us who have been here a while, um, it's sort of the natural progression of just, you know, one decision after another decision after another decision that modifies the campus. But for students who come back, it's like all at once. And they talk about all the time about how it's even hard to sort of navigate. Carruthers Hall was sort of the focal point of campus for so long. And, uh, and of course, when it was torn down and made room for our new beautiful um, Guerrero Academic Commons, um, it, it was a good upgrade. But what's interesting is older students are like, all right, now where am I on campus now? Are these red squares still there? That's that's the key. You can use that to figure out where you're, where you are, and where you're headed. So. Uh, some of my best memories are all the field trips I took with students in biology. I, I'm a marine biologist, so. I took students out on research vessels on the Chesapeake Bay, and we'd spend weekends out on the vessel traveling on the bay and showing the students how to do research and what it's all about. Those, that, that just so many wonderful times. Every year I was out doing that sort of thing, no matter what. And it, it, it's just a great time.